Welcome back. This is episode 21 of Books Closed. This episode is sponsored by Tattoo Smart, your resource for digital tattoo design tools, and the original tattoo pillow, a vinyl pillow designed for tattooers by tattooers. Before we start, I want to give you one last reminder that we've teamed up with Tattoo Smart for a giveaway. One of you can win a $500 gift card to tattoosmart.com along with some books closed swag. You can load up on a ton of digital design tools if you're the winner. And there's only one more week to enter. You go to booksclosedpodcast.com for all the information and figure out how to get your name in the running. The winner will be announced on next week's show, so don't waste another minute. I want to thank Tattoo Smart for helping to make this giveaway possible. Now, with that said, this week is the party episode. Woo! This is the last conversation I filmed while at the Bay Area Tattoo Convention in San Francisco this past fall, and I've been waiting for just the right time to unleash it upon you. After one of the convention days, I ambushed a few people that were standing around after most had left for the night and pulled them into a room to film this. I usually try to plan before an interview and get some notes and ideas and and craft a nice flowing conversation. And this episode is none of that. I mean, the conversation flows pretty well, but that's not due to any of my preparation. Uh, Luckily, I ended up with a great group of tattooers that did all the hard work for me. We start with Sean Barber, Matt Knopp, and Bo Brady. And about halfway through, we're joined by Robert Ryan. And I will warn you that some of the audio is a little inconsistent in this episode because we were having too much fun and I didn't want to be a narc telling everyone to stay on the mic and turning dials and this and that. Let me live for once. I smoothed it out as much as possible, so hopefully it's not too distracting. And without further ado, here it is. Tat Talk, Group Edition. Hello. I'm Andrew Stortz, and I'm joined here by a panel of fine tattooers. So I'll start across from me. State your name and where you tattoo. My name is Sean Barber. I tattoo in Los Angeles. Uh, I have a a shop with my girlfriend, Kim Say, memoir tattoo. Thank you, Sean. You're welcome. (laughs) (laughs) My name is Matthew Knopp. I tattoo in Washington, D.C. at Tattoo Paradise. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. <laughs> this is like a like a therapy meeting or something. Uh, my name is Bo Brady, and I tattoo a captured tattoo in Orange County, California. Right. You're from New York State. I'm not. People think I am. I'm from Arizona, oh. but I lived in New York for a long time. Interesting. I thought we had some camaraderie there. but I know. It. Yeah, I feel a lot of people think I'm originally from New York because I repped it so hard for a long time because I lived there for a long time, but... Right. I, I grew up in Arizona and then moved to New York as quickly as I could. I was like, I got to get out of this heat. I can't do it. Yeah, I don't blame you. Well, before we started rolling here, uh, Bo, you were talking about your back being all fucked up currently. Yeah, it's super cool. So I think it's a pertinent topic to talk about, I guess, aging and how our bodies are failing us. <laughs> because personally, I haven't experienced much of that yet. Yeah. I'm still but a young man. Yeah. I thought I was still but a young man, and then I learned earlier that you can pinch your nerve when you're sleeping and then be, like, pretty much handicapped for, like, a week solid, and it's really cool, but, um, (laughs) yeah. Have you guys experienced back issues or any other physical ailments? I have over over some time. I was, uh, the first time I did it, I was told, don't wear a wallet in your back pocket, which I thought was insane. Stop doing that, and all of a sudden it was like, felt young and then I realized I was actually young <laughs> and as <laughs> and as as we keep going you know keep tattooing and keep doing other things that we're not stretch you know you don't stretch you don't do anything that you should really do before because you wouldn't think about it because you're holding a tattoo machine and as the same thing all of a sudden you're sleeping you wake up in the morning or you go reach for your black ink out of the cabinet of ink and you're doubled over in pain and next thing you know it's two weeks later and you still haven't you haven't done anything and yeah don't know what you're like, well, am I falling apart? What is it? How am I going to get better? And yeah. little things. And I guess we took care of ourselves. So it would make a whole lot of difference. But right. why do that? Have you ever met a tattooer who takes care of themselves physically? I thought Bo did. Now I feel yeah. bad. I, feel, so I see. <laughs> yeah, I, see, right. I, see yeah. I, I tried <laughs> to. I tried to. Um, I, I actually do. Yeah. Like uh, Sean Topper, who I work with, 
takes crazy good care of himself. He is like incredibly active. And on top of that, he is really on top of like his diet and then actually like recovery too. And he's actually somebody who like, when I get hurt or when I do something stupid, I'll like go to him and be like, Sean, like, what do I do? And he's like, should have done this to begin with. <laughs> but yeah, well, he, who told him the secrets? He, he, man, he's on top of it. He listens to like health and fitness podcasts. Like he he's into it. Thing. Yeah, he's <laughs> into it, which is why he's in crazy good shape and not always in double over in pain. So, so he's better than us is what you're saying. Yeah. Sean's better than us for sure. Well, you guys are fucking jocks. How's that feel? <laughs> <laughs> I've been called that for many years. So <laughs> you can wear it proudly. Yeah. I, I, it's a badge of honor these days. It, he's going to punch you in a second. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just make sure it's on film so I can do something with it. Yeah, It'll absolutely. be worth it. <laughs> so my favorite question to ask people on the show, and I'll pose it to you, Sean, first, why do you think tattooers complain so much? Um, I think it's easy. It's easy to complain. I think um, people have it too good. I think they most tattooers have never had a job outside of tattooing, so they're. Yeah, I think they're used to everybody telling them that they're the best thing in the world, and you know their their peers and comrades appreciating them for what they do. And mm. I think uh, I don't know. We have it pretty easy. It's a, it's a difficult. It's a difficult job. You know, it's a very stressful job. It's a very taxing job. It's a very physically grueling job. But it's an amazing life. It's an amazing thing to be able to do as a choice in your in your life. Um, it is easy to complain, but I can't figure out why. I don't know why. Yeah, I've I've, I've actually pondered the same thing. You just think about it because it's great for what we get to do. You get to draw. You get to paint. You get to sit around and bullshit with your friends all day. Um, you can work as hard or as little as you want, and still live how you choose to. So if you want to, you know, if you want to drive a sports car, people drive sports cars. If they want to ride motorcycles, they ride motorcycles. If they want to, you know, ride bikes or work out, they ride bikes and work out. And but then you would talk to those same people who you look at and you're like, man, that's that's great that they're, you know, hey, my homie just bought a house or my homie bought this car, and you look at it and then you know you go talk to them and they're like. Man, I bought that that BMW I got. Man, that thing really sucks, sir. You know, I wish I, you know, I should have bought, you know, I should have bought the, you know, the five bedroom in the hills instead of the three bedroom in the city. Or, you know, they find, there's always something wrong with something, and we're all guilty of it, which is the worst thing. Because you know, as good as the steak we order at dinner, you know, there's something wrong with the steak. You know, oh man, it well, you know, it wasn't three inches thick; it was only two and a quarter. You know, mm. do do you think part of it is is because people are used to customers? expelling all of their issues with with us i was gonna say i think it's partially because we're conditioned to to hear complaints a lot but also i think adding on to what both of them said i think it's because we have visual history of our careers and we can always be like oh it used to be better it used to be this it used to be that and it's like the only other thing i can think of that really mimics that is hardcore because growing up in the hardcore scene, it was always like, oh, you guys should have been around when it was this. You guys should have been around when it was that. Every, and it's like, yeah. but that's everything. But yeah. I feel like with tattooing, it's because a lot of us came from punk rock or hardcore or something like that to where it's like now we, we're grown ass adults and we're still doing the, oh man, it was better then. Oh, it was better then. And it's like, well, it's probably as good as it's ever going to be, you know? And it is. And it's, yeah. You know, it, but if you look back, you think about it, you can't have too many complaints. Look, I've got two daughters, one in her second year of uh, college, the other one who's a senior. And I look at, as they've grown up, what I've been able to do with tattooing, whereas I've been able to work a sp very specific schedule where I could pick them up from school every day when they were little. And I could hang out at the playground, and I could take them home, do their homework with them, cook dinner, give them a bath, and then, I'd go back, then I would go back to work. And there's not a lot of jobs that you can actually do this or you can set your schedule where you're able to do that and still make a true living. And it's crazy because, again, I'll be the first one that I'll sit there and I'll bitch and I'll complain and I'll vent. And then you think back or somebody will check you and be like, why are you complaining? Like, what, what's so bad? You know, what, you had somebody that wanted you to turn a stencil around so they could read it or, you know, you know or, you know, what, what, was, what was the worst thing about your day that you... You know, you got to draw and you got to then 
watch four you know net new Netflix shows, yeah. and then you did two tattoos. Yeah. Terrible day, right? It was the worst thing ever. And then you got some guy, that, somebody that dug a ditch, or a nurse that you know had to help you know a bus accident or something crazy that you know maybe those are those are terrible things that might weigh you down. But doing the tattoos like it, it's not that bad. Right, and I believe it's always relative. Because no matter what you do, there's going to be days that are better than others. But to put it in that context, it's definitely, I mean, we all know that we've got it pretty good, but we'll still find ways to complain about it, typically. And I think a lot of it might have to do, since the show talks a lot about social media and stuff, that um, pretty much Instagram is just all, everyone telling each other how great they are. And so, because it used to just be our customers, but now it's our peers and it's it's a good positive attitude that I like, but at the same time, I think it it just furthers that uh, like the conditioning, like you're saying that we're just so we're so used to getting that where if we hear a negative thing, it's like going to knock us off our feet. Sean and I were actually talking about it the other day how we thought that if Instagram had like a dislike button, how quickly people would think like more about what they were like putting out there. You know, yeah. like we were talking about somebody who wasn't involved in tattooing, but it was like kind of like an Instagram celebrity kind of person. And they were, we were like, man, if they weren't getting only positive feedback or if they weren't only filtering positive feedback to themselves. They're getting ne- negative feedback. They but just they're, delete it all. Exactly. <laughs> right, yeah, you can yeah. control what people But it's say. like, mm-hmm. if they saw thousands of negative dislikes or whatever, maybe it would make you think twice. Or maybe it would make you be like, oh, maybe, maybe I need to take a step back and like second guess kind of like, what I'm doing, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe I am the worst person. Like everyone yeah. tells me. Yeah. You know, maybe, <laughs> maybe I really maybe am the is. worst dude. <laughs> but I mean, I think, you know, if there was, you know, we'll, we'll sit around occasionally at the shop and talk about if there was Yelp for people, Yeah, you know, you can imagine like, okay, well, all right, man, I walked in, I met John today and man, that John was sure was a prick. You know, he just, you know, wouldn't talk to me nice. You know, he was, he was very short and didn't help me out, but then I met, Aunt, you know, Andrew, and Andrew was great. He was super nice to me and friendly, and you know, he bought me a water. And, you know, Five stars. Yeah. Yeah, they say that stuff on, on Yelp for sure. Oh, yeah. They all, yeah, they do, and they, <laughs> it's just something. <laughs> my, my favorite are the negative Yelp reviews, because it's like the positive ones are like three lines, and then the negative ones a book. are like a fucking novel. You have to click like yeah. see more yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to see the rest of it. It's like, dude, you had the time and the energy to sit there and really think about why this person ruined your day. Right. Well, yeah, yeah. There's, and there's plenty of reasons people find. I, I got a Yelp review maybe six months ago over a parking spot. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, oh, you know, he went into his tattoo shop, but he was a prick because he wouldn't do, you know, it's like. Invisible used really, to get. This is awful. The best Yelp reviews. <laughs> because Invisible is a pirate ship and nobody cares. And. A woman left a Yelp review saying, I don't know who this guy thinks he is, but he didn't even have a business card. He just wrote Regino Gonzalez on a piece of paper like I'm supposed to be impressed. And we were like, wow, (laughs) she doesn't. Yeah, Yeah, we're like, yo, dog, Regino talked to you like he stopped what he stopped probably doing a bodysuit to come talk to you. He's a busy guy. Like he's focused on what he's doing. He doesn't need a business card. You're fine. Like you should have just been like, oh, thank you. And left it at that mm-hmm. but like she was in completely she, incensed she had the time to go and you know yeah. write that right. out which is amazing too yeah. well he lost her business yeah. so i hope he's feeling the the reverberations <laughs> of that to this day yeah. probably no. not <laughs> no more skull back pieces yes because yeah. <laughs> usually people pursuing a bodysuit are very impatient yeah really, yes. yeah. <laughs> really sad at your handwritten name on right. a piece of paper right and it's funny To think about a shop like that where just a normal person who has no idea what they're walking into can even end up there and they think that all shops are the same well we uh, that was something that we always talked about invisible too was it was like we didn't have signs for a really really long time and we kind of treated everyone even if they came off the street like getting something stupid that it was like you found something kind of special like whether or not you got the full treatment of like people acting like maniacs or, you know, the, everyone in the shop not wearing a shirt and tattooing the entire day. Like you got something special because you're part of like that club now, like you got tattooed there. So you're part of it. And like people who got big tattoos really felt that and they still do. It's, it's, it's a cool vibe when you go there. Cause like yeah. people feel that. Like, well, it's a very intimate power. space. Yeah. Oh yeah. Was, 
dude, especially when we didn't have <laughs> air conditioning. That was. Have you have you been in that space? Mm -hmm. oh, it's it's got short ceilings. Yeah, it's got short ceilings. The walls are. It's not very wide, and uh, it's a basement. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a pretty cool place to get. Yeah, it's awesome place. It's <laughs> it's it's got a lot of power in it, and it's it's crazy that like it just houses like the gnarliest fucking tattooers. But yeah, it's it's. Yeah. And imagine if you just stumbled in there for your first tattoo, and then that totally molded everything that you know about tattooing from that point. Dude, you'd be yeah, surprised. Pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, you'd be surprised. Like, it's funny because there'd be people who come in and have no idea what they were walking into and then leave and come back and be like, I didn't realize that I came come play someplace special. Like, they looked us up on, like, you know, just the internet or whatever. Or they looked up, like, the Instagram and they were like, dude, I didn't realize that this place was this. Like, it was just the shop that came up on Google that we walked into that day. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, you guys lucked out. Like, it didn't matter who you got tattooed by there, you know? Right. Like, Cause I was back when I was there too, it was, you know, kind of, if somebody had time, they would do the tattoo, you know, like you could get a random walk-in from Damien Rodriguez and you're, he's going to, it's going to be fucking laser perfect, you know? So. Yeah. Yeah. Those are, those are the good shops where if somebody has the time, they're just doing the tattoo and it doesn't matter yeah. what they normally do or how they normally do things. And they're just like, cool. Yeah. Oh, you want, you want a name? All right. We'll fire that off yeah. for you real quick. And Troy would, Troy would do walk-ins a lot too. And you get an experience, you get the Troy experience no matter what. So it's perfect. <laughs> that ought to be fun. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> Sit down, put on YouTube, walk away, come back, <laughs> do a tattoo. Tell us to look up something on YouTube, walk away, come back, <laughs> yell at Waka, come back. Perfect. Talk about motorcycles. Yeah, talk about motorcycles. Talk about other things. Yeah. Argue about some stuff here and there. Yeah. Just, just to argue. Conspiracy theories. <laughs> Dick Cheney a lot. I mean, someone's got to look into these things. Yeah. <laughs> it's not Troy who. <laughs> right. Chemtrails. Yes. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, I can, I can remember on a lot of occasions having like an 18-year-old kid that walks in and they don't really know what they want. And then over not too much time, they start getting what you know, what I might want to do or something. And, and I, I always think that's a cool thing where people can just l find the right place that works for them and they can really be molded by that instead of only relying on the internet and reviews and all that stuff. Yeah. Cause I, I feel like that's a, a problem. I mean, a lot of the stuff that, that gets talked about on the show, I, I can see both sides to it, but I just see Yelp and tattooing as a huge problem that is like, it doesn't really do a lot of good. No, it's, I mean, other than, you know, since, gives directions. I mean, I think that's pretty much yeah, it's, a, right. it's a helpful thing, but I've, I've actually tattooed like, uh, executives from Yelp over time. Like, and you know, and I've, and I've said to them, you know, cause we got fuck Yelp stickers all over the shop. Amazing. <laughs> what, 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 <laughs> why, why, why do you have those? And you know, and you kind of say like, look, because you've given this power to people that don't necessarily understand what power they have now. Yeah. Because you can now in some areas, you could ruin somebody's career or you could ruin a business that you just didn't, you know, you walked in and didn't understand or didn't get what was going on. Like it's one thing if it's, you know, you miss, you know, if you're mistreated or whatever it is, but if you walk in and you know, you just don't we're busy, it. you know, cause we're, we're, we run into a lot as we get the Yelp reviews of the girls that were out or the guys that are out for brunch and by four o'clock in the afternoon or, you know, fall down hammered, but somehow they remember to send a shitty Yelp review the next day because we wouldn't tattoo them when they were drunk. Or you get the people that remember to, you know, when they're gonna send you a Yelp review, they want something to, because they weren't tattooed fast enough. Why didn't, you know, I had somebody not too long ago call me at the shop and they said, uh, I needed to hire more tattooers because they had to wait 25 minutes to get a tattoo. Wow. There was four tattooers working on the shift right then. Wow. And there's four, like, you know, four seasoned guys that do walk-ins. So it wasn't like, you know, there was three guys that just, you know, watching the paint dry as they tattoo. Yep. You know, these guys will fire tattoos out all day. And, but I needed to hire more because she actually had to wait a little bit That's of time. Insane. And it's, it is, it's, it's wild. It's just such an entitlement that people Absolutely. exhibit yeah. in those reviews. For sure. It's, it's great. You know, it's like, what is it? Domino's pizza used to do the 30 minutes or you get your pizza for free. Yeah. And it's you know, like that attitude that people think is, uh, universal with everything yeah and it's brutal it's it's a it's a tough thing to it's not to gonna go to away deal with. yeah no nah. no it's, it's only gonna it's, get worse it's just gonna get worse for sure yeah and you can't and you know you can't you know if you read them or you deal with them or most businesses you know you'll have to you know at some point you have to actually deal with what's said because again it will if it grows big enough it'll wreck you 
and it'll you yeah. know just bring you down or it'll be people you know the, the whole gang gang mentality theory on like the internet when okay well let's attack this guy or let's attack these people and it's you know you get people all right we're going to attack a business and we're going to take this business down and, and you're like you're taking a business down because they actually had morals and standards and they wouldn't tattoo you when you're drunk or you're mad because what costs more on the east coast in a big city costs than where you lived in a small town in nebraska you know prices are different things change you know my rent might be 2500 bucks for a studio apartment you know 2500 bucks a month where you're at you get you know 15 acres and you know two houses Whatever, yeah yeah it's just t- you know it's t- it, it's a tough thing to have and it's not going away and it's a tough game to have to try to want to play or deal with with when it comes to yeah well tattooing is one of the rare places where the customer isn't always right and they're not treated like that necessarily even if you're super respectful and and good to your customers like you can't always just do if someone freaks out just give them what they want like with a customer service job with like retail stuff or or a store, or whatever. If you just freak out on the manager, they'd be like, "Okay, just take yeah, they, it, just they, take yeah, it." Yeah, yeah they, and they open up the, you know, they open up the bag and they're like, "Whatever you need, grab it and go." And yeah. you know, tattoo. And you know, we get, I'm sure we all get the same thing: is, well, then I expect my money back. And it's like, well, no, we'll make everything right and we'll fix anything, any issues you have. But no, you can't have your money back. Well, I want my money back. Well, no, that's not how it works. It right. just doesn't. That's not you know. We can't have the tattoo yeah, back. Right. Yeah. You don't like it? Okay, cool. Let's let's go get a razor. Let's <laughs> <laughs> let's peel it off and then uh, Game I'll, over. I'll get you eighty bucks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's always those customers that it's like twenty minutes before closing and you're like, maybe maybe I don't have time and that's the one where you're gonna be stuck there and it's gonna be a problem and it's gonna be an issue no matter what. And you just tried to do the right things and you get fucked every time. Yeah. <laughs> every, every time. Yeah. For it's sure. yeah. <laughs> Another internet thing that I think about is the amount of fundraisers that happen. There's a lot of them. It's like constant fundraisers. Yes. There's a lot of sick people out there. Do you guys donate to fundraisers on the internet? I have. I will All sometimes. the time. If it's a, if it's a, fr- a friend or a... F- well, yeah, of course. Yeah. It's a health issue all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I will, yeah. I will sometimes. Like if it's a friend or if it's something like I, I can help with then for sure. But I don't know. It depends. It's a weird, it's a weird thing. Yeah. And I don't know. I, like Sean said, if it's health thing, it's not something. Yeah. Usually somebody who's been in the business a long time and they're not doing well and they're either passed away or, you know, they're, their health is horrible. Absolutely. I, I definitely have. I, I think, the hardest thing with some of these are the people that sometimes you see them consistently coming back for certain people or sometimes like I, I I'd almost rather, Hey man, send me a medical bill and let me make, let me send a payment to there. Let me send it to your bill. Like, so I know that it's going there and I, and you know, you hate to think that about people or things you would hope everyone's always on the up and up. Um, but I look at it a lot of times as, you know, a lot of us have families or have, Things that you know we're, we have our, we also have our bills and things that we have to pay, and it's hard to say okay, well let me peel this extra off because I that extra goes in you know some maybe it goes in my savings account or whatever pays off you know whatever it is it just is I saw there was a tattooer that had been hit by a motorcycle that works uh, out in Ohio a tattoo faction and what someone did for him for Mike at the time was. Uh, they collected art and then they auctioned the art off yeah. at the at the shop. I know uh, the guys from Truth South do a lot of like benefit stuff for tattooers, and the auction stuff to me was always great because you know that it's going. There's there. an exchange. Yeah. yeah, and you know it's going there. And like yeah, it I works said, for everybody. And it and it's and it's a good and it's a good thing. It's just when you send somebody cash, it just doesn't. I don't think it always goes where it's supposed to. A, a lot of times, the GoFundMe stuff has kind of like a soulless feeling to it too like well they're they're collecting you know and sometimes yeah. they're set up if you you know and sometimes you have to look at it sometimes it's set up by people that aren't even involved with yeah the family or you know and, and i've seen those and you know hey you know i got you know text hey don't donate because this isn't going to where you think it's no going. Sure. Yeah. you know something might be going somewhere else and and you don't want to hope that people are taking advantage of this close-knit community because tattooing no matter you know as, as how divided people might yeah. get 
everyone's still close knit and the people are still looking out for people. I know, you know, Scott put up, a, Sylvia put up something for a friend not too long ago and it was like, you know, make a donation. Tattooer makes a donation, $500 or more, you know, he's going to send you a machine. Yeah. You know, that's a great, I mean, that's a Which great is basically thing. like the auction kind of yeah. setup, which yeah. works yeah. for everybody. Because then exchange. people, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think that's, and that's really people, and like Scott believed in having people donate, so he stepped up to do something course, that showed how amazing. convicted he was. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That sort of thing, I would never turn my nose up at because to me that makes sense. It's like someone close to you, you want to help them, you want to use the, the platform we've all built for ourselves to help someone. That's great. But it, I also find myself feeling um, almost bad for like questioning that yeah. stuff sometimes because right. you don't want to be the one who's like, terrible. you know, I don't know about that one because everyone's got <laughs> issues and well, we all have shit going know, on. Again, but. it's, you know, again, we've all, you know, we all might have something, you know, sell some, you know, maybe we should sell something of ours off or something. You know, well, there, there's thousands of people that have real problems that aren't using that platform. Exactly. Right. Yeah. 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 It just seems to be like, oh, something happens. Well, the first thing you do is set up a, a fundraiser on the internet. Yeah. Now it's everybody else's burden. Yeah. Right. And that, I, that's kind of wherever that's, that's where my head goes sometimes where it's like, did you exhaust other options? Did you think of something else that could possibly like get you out of the situation? Because like, I feel like we've all had situations where all of a sudden you had to come up with a bunch of cash really quick and maybe you didn't have it, but it's like, well, maybe you have to borrow, you know, loan or steal something, figure it out. You know, right. like, unfortunately this is the career we chose where it's like, eh, sometimes you don't have all the money you need and you probably don't have insurance and you probably don't have a savings account, you know, like, right. Well, that's pretty confirmed, I think, if you're, like, asking the general public for help. Exactly, yeah. I hate to say it, but it's, like, I'm guilty of it, too. Like, if, you, if you're not as smart with your cash as you should be, like, why is it my problem, you know? Yeah. Like, it sucks to say that, too, but at the same time, like... And that's why it's such a sticky thing to talk about, yeah. I feel like. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a rough subject, because, again, you, you know, in the back of your head, you're like, well, hey, man, sell that punk record collection I know you have, or yeah. sell, you know, sell those... Sell, sell your that flash Rolex. Sell, sell, yeah, sell your Rolex, or sell, you know... Sell your chopper, you know, sell, you know, what about that sports car that you have, you know, that's, you know, sitting half built in your garage or whatnot, you yeah. know, again, it's, and, and then you hate to say that, like, well, shit, because we could help them or you can help them. But then again, it, it, it does. There's, there's a lot of, there's many times that where you feel and you're just like, I feel like there's exceptions work. to it. Like, obviously, like there's certain health things where it's like, you can't fucking expect something like that to happen. Or if it's like, if there's a death or if it's somebody's kid, it's like, Dude, like, there's no way I would ever even judge somebody for reaching out, asking for, like, help. There's no right. fucking way. But there's certain times where I'm like, eh, did you need to? Did you, like, did you have to ask for help? Or should you have? Or should you maybe have just, like, hit up a couple of your friends? Maybe you did. I don't know. Because right. I don't know the backstory. But it's like. And you don't want to. And, you know, again, it's, it's, and I don't it's a ask. very touchy yeah. situation that you don't want to go. Hey man, should I blast this on the internet or should I even text it and say, Hey, did you know, do you have this or did you do that? Or, yeah. you know, because again, maybe they, maybe they had, maybe all that stuff, you know, maybe anything that they once had was gone and they'd already gone through everything right. and that, you know, you know, they're, you know, they're sleeping on a couch somewhere and this is their last Yeah. and you don't really right. know that. But and then you, at the same time, like I, I know people personally who I didn't know that they were down on their fucking luck because they didn't ask for help and they were sleeping on a couch. Yep. And then I saw them like a month later and they were like, yeah, man, my life fucking sucked for like three months. I was sleeping on a couch and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, why didn't you fucking tell anyone? They're like, because I want to make a GoFundMe and I'd be mortified. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, or, or yeah, like, why didn't you fucking tell anyone? Why didn't you ask for help? And they're just like, because my fucking problem. And it's like, okay. Which is pretty respectable. Yeah. It, it, there's, I feel like there's two sides to every coin on that one, you know? Definitely. And it is, like I said, it's the one, you know, sometimes uh, they don't know that there's a GoFundMe before them. Right. You know, and again, I've, I know that there's been a few people I've known that have been in the hospital or whatnot. And there's all of a sudden, you know, oh, hey, I sent you some money. And they're like, to what? And you're like, oh, to your go for What do you fucking mean there's a go? You know, and you're like, oh, okay. And then they're like, well, my cousin just bought a new Cadillac last week, so I don't know <laughs> right. where that money came from. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> right. You know, it, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's so, it's such a tough one. Such yeah, a tough one. Well, that's why I ask it in this setting because we can discuss it without being dicky to people. <laughs> right. <laughs> glad, glad we got to be a part of this one. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. All of us are now blackballed. Yeah. Keep you. Oh yeah. <laughs> Set myself so on anyone, so if any of us, any of us end up with extra GoFundMe now, we are all screwed because no one is giving a shit. <laughs> 
This week we're sponsored by Tattoo Smart. Tattoo Smart is a marketplace for forward thinking tools for tattooers, artists, and designers, empowering them to learn new digital skills and improve their design workflows. They collaborate with tattooers to create brush sets for Procreate and Clip Studio Paint, reference ebooks, digital color tools like the Abbott Color Wheel, and design and software tutorials. Tattoo Smart gives you the tools to speed up the process of conceptualizing and rendering time consuming elements, allowing you to spend more time focusing on the composition of your tattoo design. You can check out all of the Tattoo Smart tools and tutorials at tattoosmart.com. While you're there, check out the Great Head Brush Set for Procreate and Clip Studio Paint by Killian Moon. Killian created 42 stamp brushes of female and male's heads, full body proportion guides, and stencil ready skulls based on the ideal proportions developed by Andrew Loomis. These digital construction tools give you a guide to develop your designs but allow enough flexibility to add your own style. Find out more and get Great Head by Killian Moon on TattooSmart.com. Don't forget to use discount code BOOKSCLOSED for 15% off any tools on the site, one use per customer. That's TattooSmart.com with promo code BOOKSCLOSED for 15% off your order. We're also sponsored by The Original Tattoo Pillow. Create a more sanitary workspace by replacing cloth pillows with a pillow designed with the needs of tattooers and their customers in mind. Each 10.5 by 20 inch pillow is covered in a soft yet durable antibacterial vinyl with polyfill stuffing to provide firm yet cushioned support. Just wrap it before use and then wipe it clean when you're done. Piece of cake. Personally, I'm a big fan of these pillows and I use one quite often myself. This is a tattooer owned small business based in Anaheim, California. And there's nothing better than supporting other tattooers who are working to problem solve for the rest of us. For more information, please check out the original tattoopillow.com. And from now until March 31st, use promo code BOOKSCLOSED on torchtattoo.com to get 20% off a pillow of your own. You can also pick up the original tattoo pillow at Lucky Supply, Saltwater Tattoo Supply, and Kingpin Tattoo Supply so you have no excuse not to get one of your own. Stop wrapping up rolls of paper towels and making your customers jam them up under their legs and under their heads, all these things. Get the original tattoo pillow now. The best way to support Books Closed is by supporting our great sponsors, so please check them out, the original tattoo pillow and Tattoo Smart. And that kind of plays into another thing that I've noticed while doing the show that whenever I'm talking to people who um, who like have businesses or sell stuff on top of tattooing, everyone that I talk to is so modest about money stuff. No one wants to admit that they're making money. We're obviously all making money. That That's why we do this to an extent. So I think it's because a lot of people almost hold it against someone if they're making too much money to them. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I get I get that. I mean, I've seen it, you know. Oh, you got a you know, you got a shop, oh, you got a couple shops, you got this, you got that. Oh, man, you know, you must be living, you know, you're living well or you you know, hey, I see I see you here again. Oh, man, everything must be great. Not like, oh, man, hey, you, you've been invested your money well and you know, you you did well, you know, you've done well with, you know, real estate or whatnot or, you know, hey, man, you're working a lot and you're doing, you know, it's almost like you said. It's almost held against you in a way sometimes. Yeah, it's weird because, like, for me personally, like I've always been stoked whenever I see people I know like coming up because it's like, oh, that's something like I aspire for. You know, like I want to fucking buy a house. I want to fucking have nice shit, and mm-hmm. I want to get there for hard work, and I want to get there because people like or appreciate what I do. You know, like I want to get there on my own merit. But it's like if my friends are getting there, hell yeah, that's awesome because they're getting there because their hard work got them there, you know? So I've always kind of looked at it in that aspect, but I've definitely seen it where people are like weirdly either jealous or like, I don't know, like hating on them. Yeah. It's just hating. Yeah. I just, I think it's lame when people who work hard are either embarrassed or uncomfortable to admit that they're like being rewarded for their efforts. And I know it's kind of like a societal thing where people don't discuss what they make and everything. No one's going to be like, I made $120,000 last year. People don't want to brag about it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Right, which I get. But I just, I think it's funny how people really talk around it. And I think it's just the, the fear of judgment or that, that people hold it against you to like have success in something you do. Like if you do a beautiful painting and you sell it for, you know, the amount of money that it's worth. Someone might see that and be like, well, why do you, why are you getting paid that much? Sure. But it's sure. like, well, because you've put in the work to be able to do that and someone wanted to buy it. But there's always going to be people that just sit there and like stew in, in their own negativity towards that. And I think that's absolutely, well, they, they also don't realize that, you know, in a year I might make 70 paintings and sell five. Yeah. But yeah. And you know what I think the tough thing is about it. Probably about that is because if someone knows what the price of a painting was, or if you know they know someone that bought one, then they're now they're counting what you make. Now they in their head they're sure. counting your money sure. for you. They're like sure. they're like, oh, he just said he made seventy paintings. I know he sells his paintings for this yeah. man. He's you know, and again, yeah, like yeah. you said, you might have driving a goddamn you Maserati. Might have, you might have yeah. sixty five <laughs> of those things sitting yeah. in the house, like yeah, because you know we all whether we paint or whatever we do, you know, artistically, outside of tattooing, we all have made stuff, and whether we sold it or we keep it. We keep, I think, more than we sell. Most people do, unless you know, yeah. you guys, unless you guys are all way luckier than than me. I, you know, I have a majority of anything I've ever made. Yeah, I, I, I'm like, I recently tried been painting more and getting rid of it because I'm just, I can't look at it anymore. But yeah, for a long time, I just, I wouldn't even try to sell it because I'm just like, nah, nobody wants to buy this. Like, but they might. But they might. And so now I'm like, eh, maybe you do. Look at this. Take a look at that. What do you think? And right. before you know it, people can resent you for making money too. I, yes, dude, I cannot <laughs> wait for that day. You're such a jerk. I cannot wait for that day when somebody's like, man, that dude, <sighs> handsome and rich. <laughs> what are the odds? Yeah. Man, look how old he is. He could still fit into Fred Perry's yeah. too. This is crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> Slim, handsome, rich. <sighs> Has he got his hair still? Nah. <laughs> Shaving that since I was 23. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the money stuff is weird because that is such a huge part of what we do that I think doesn't really get discussed that much. No, nah, it's the same as, you know, again, it's when it comes to the money, it's, you know, if you upgrade your plane ticket, then all of a sudden, like, oh, you flew, you flew business class or you flew, you know, premium economy, like, damn, man, like, that's, that's insane. And, you know, they didn't bother to ask if, you know, why, like why would it be a topic of conversation? <laughs> that's a good question. It shouldn't be. I feel like it, the, it's only a topic when it's negative, I guess, and that's why people... Um, I'm just... And maybe the context of this show isn't reality, but like when discussing certain things, I just... I, it's not that I would expect someone to be very forthcoming with that, or any specifics, but just the way that people that I know are successful through their hard work and their, their risks that they've taken and everything that they've done, it's like almost a, a bad word to be to admit that in any way. I guess people don't want to come off as being braggadocious or I don't know. Yeah. I feel like we all kind of like being tattooed in general is kind of like flashy. So it's like you kind of wear that on a day to day basis. So maybe kind of like showing off more than that. Like to me personally, it's like I, I usually wear a hoodie and hat. I got my whole head tattooed, but it's like I don't want people to like talk to me about it all the time and it's not just because I don't want tat talk it's like eh, I'd rather just kind of chill you know so maybe it's still kind of similar thing where it's like maybe they don't want to talk about like oh, I made 50 grand going here or I made a hundred thousand a year or whatever it's like yeah. they're just trying to keep it more on like a yeah I did good I was so, successful some, some of those I know over the years have been people trying to keep it secret because they don't want anyone else to go to where they were yeah, yeah. when they, when they've made the 50 grand on their, you know, their yeah. two week trip or something like yeah. that. They're, they're, they're like, Oh man, it was, okay. it was all right. It wasn't that good. And yeah. you know, in the meantime, you're like, oh, but, uh, you, you told me it's, you know, it was well, I think we should, I should go there. No, no, no. You don't want to, you know, yeah, nah, man, <laughs> it wasn't that <laughs> great. It stuff. wasn't that great. They're, you know, they're, they're not really into the stuff you do. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've seen people kind of do the opposite thing. Tattooers where, they almost feel like they have to overcompensate like in the rest of society to like validate themselves the way that some people who aren't tattooers don't realize that this is a career and this is something that people can make a living doing. So they almost, they do things that to like keep up with people outside of tattooing. I could see that. My, my family definitely asked me when I said like I started apprenticing if, if it was a real job, like they're like, Oh, is, is tattooing like a real job? And I was like, 
think so. Yeah. Might be. I don't know. Right. You know, but yeah. Yeah. How did your families, when you were first out doing, what was the reaction to that? Uh, I had already had a career. I was actually uh, doing printing. So when I fucked around with tattooing initially in high school, it was completely, you know, anti get, don't do it. You're, you know, and then got a couple tattoos and it was the worst thing I ever did in my life. Like, you know, I was going down and, and then I, you know, got away from it while a lot of other friends got into it and they actually proper apprenticeships and did all that stuff. And I was working, doing printing, like I said, doing printing. And all of a sudden all these friends that now they've been tattooing a few years, they're like, why aren't you doing it? You, you know, you used to love to do it. And when I sat down, with the family and I was like, all right, this is what's gonna happen. And this is what I'm thinking about doing. They're like, you know, my, my dad was like, he was like, so you're gonna work a full-time job and then you're gonna work at a tattoo shop until two in the morning every night? Yeah. And you're only gonna be off on Sundays? Yeah. And that seems like a good idea. I, I, I think it's gonna work out. And he's like, well, I, you know, I hope, hope it does for you and you know, now looking down the road, almost 22 years later, it worked out well. So it was it was a little it was a little rough go for a while, but it actually has been a you know it's been been well, and I'm glad it's I. It's working I'm, out for you. I'm yeah. glad I did. And I'm glad I, and you know what I'm glad I did it the way I did because I didn't love it or respect it when I first was it was introduced to it. It was just a cool fly by night thing that you know I like to to tinker in and. I'm glad that I actually learned to appreciate it and love it and get to where I was, where I've gotten. Yeah. Well, I don't think you can last that long doing it if you don't cross over into that zone. True. Cause if it's just like a job, then it's going to probably break your spirit before you can <laughs> persevere yeah. past that. Yeah. I have nightmares about tattoos, like straight up, like it, that's how deep it gets into my brain sometimes where it's like, I'll do a tattoo and be like, ah, I could have done it better. And it's like, I'll sleep and then just, I'll think about it and think about it and then wake up being like, damn it. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if it didn't occupy my brain like that, I, I don't think I'd do it, you know, or at least I wouldn't care as much as I do. Right. I wouldn't try as hard as I do, you know? So. Yeah. Those are the ones I, st- I, I, I get those nightmares too. After I go home after doing a bunch of, uh. Bible verses and <laughs> paragraphs and <laughs> middle of the night, all of a sudden, I think, God, how did, did I spell that wrong? I know I spelled that word wrong. I know I spelled, you know, in your head, you're just like, you know, you get to the shop the next day and you're looking, you know, no, nah, that's spelled right, but I know I spelled it wrong. You know, when are they going to come back? They're going to come back and they're going to just tear me apart. Or when, when's that Yelp review going to pop up that, you know, how, I, how I ruined their life with the misspelling and. I had to do a portrait. You don't ever see it. I had to do a portrait of this kid's brother who killed himself. It was the only picture that was like worth a damn to even do a portrait of. And I straight up had nightmares up until the appointment. Like he booked it and I was like, cool. And then I had nightmares all the way up until the appointment, like about that tattoo and about just sure. ru- ruining it's a lot of pressure. it. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, this is the only picture you'll ever have of this kid. Like it's the only tattoo he had. It was like the most pressure I'd, I had ever felt it like in, at that point in tattooing and I had nightmares straight up to it, but how'd it go? It was fine. Like in the <laughs> end it was fine. Like I, I took a lot more because t- you stress so much. I over think it. so. Yeah. I, I took a lot more time on it than I typically would have, like would have just like got it done and that would have been that. But like I sat there and really took my time and made sure everything was sewn up and it was fine. But yeah, yeah like totally, nightmare city up until so that you leveled point. up after that one yeah i was like <laughs> 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 Regino came over and goes that was a good one <laughs> went to the basement did push-ups it was fine <laughs> oh man did you, did you check, check with tron make sure you did him the right way though oh yeah he was fine okay, okay. yeah yeah <laughs> troy was like nah just straighten your back more i'm like All right. yeah maybe that's what happened to your back because you were doing the push-ups with emotion and you weren't using <laughs> the, the proper form there was not <laughs> enough sadness <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't enough Viking helmets. <laughs> Man. I can always think of times I've done tattoos where for whatever reason, it's just like, sometimes it just feels harder and you really, like, you really have to struggle just to get it done. And in your head, you convince yourself that it just looks like shit. And then you dread seeing the person coming back and then they come in for something else. And you look at the tattoo and you're like, it's not so bad. And you almost like it because you, you're, you're convinced it's a total train wreck. 
and everything went wrong and it just nothing went and lines didn't go in. It just, their skin looked like it was just like. Everything was a battle. Yeah. 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 And then you're like, who redid this for you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you get this redone somewhere? Did, did, right. Who did this for you? How did this right. happen? Yeah. <laughs> but then you can feel false confidence sometimes because it's like, well, if I remember that being so bad, then this one might not be so bad. But then it truly is that bad. <laughs> <laughs> when you see the next one and you're all sure you're going to, you're like above that now. It's tough. It's hard to stay in check. How about you when you started with your family? What was the reaction like? Uh, they didn't know. I mean, they understood a little bit why, but I started when I was 35. Mm. Um, like, why? I was an uh, art teacher. Like, why do you want to quit teaching to pursue tattooing? Like, yeah, you, you're a heavily tattooed person. You're painting these things, but you have a job. You're doing fine. You're making a living. Mm. You know, why, why do you need to do this? It was, it was difficult. Yeah. It was, it was difficult for me to make that choice for myself. What pushed you over the edge? To go for it. Uh, encouraging people around me. Um, and just, it's either you do it or you don't. You know, and I had to convince myself of that fact. And I, it, it was hard. It was fucking hard. It's almost harder when you're older because you're set up with a whole life for a while. And to leave that behind is different from when you're like 20. And you think, maybe yeah. I want a tattoo. Yeah I, had, yeah, I had responsibilities. I had debt, significant debt. I had... Um, you know, the first three years tattooing, I didn't make much money at all. That was very, very difficult. Yeah. Yeah, you're living the, regu the regular everyday life that, you know, you got a paycheck every week. It was, you know, you made a salary that the same salary you got paid, you know how much you're going to make, you're going to get paid. And then mm -hmm. you jump into this new yeah. one that it's like, well, shit, I made 200 bucks this week. That sucks. Like, well, and you can't, yeah. you can't learn it without being there. Right. And yeah. you have, and you have and to go, and you have to go that route. Doing yeah. the things that, your teachers asking you to do and the other people in the shop are asking you to do. And yeah, it was, it was not easy. Yeah. I, I was living in like a hardcore kid house and sleeping on a floor and eating Del Taco every day when I was apprenticing. So it didn't matter. Yeah. Bo, how old were you when you started? I started working in tattoo shops when I was 17 Yeah, and I apprenticed under this dude, Ed Slocum in Arizona and then moved up to Phoenix and finished my apprenticeship up there. Yeah. But yeah, like pretty much the only real job I've ever had is tattooing. Um, fell in love with it as soon as I kind of saw it and was like, okay, that's what I want to do. But yeah, like I decided that's what I was going to do. And like I said, slept on floors and didn't care because I was young enough to where it didn't matter that I didn't care. Um, but it wasn't easy. Like there were definitely times where I was like, man, I'm never going to do this. Like I've been working at this shop for years and it doesn't matter. Like I'm not going to learn how to tattoo. And I was okay with it, you know. I was like, I'll figure something else out, like whatever. But like, I already had my neck tattooed, so I was it's like, too late. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably be like a Shut piece back. of garbage somewhere. Like, yeah. who knows? But yeah, like my my family kind of knew I wasn't like gonna go the college route or go like the regular job route pretty early on. Mm -hmm. Like, they were they were not stoked, but they also just understood. Like my parents asked me, like, like I said, they straight up asked, like, is it a real job? And I was like, yeah, I think so. It seems like it. Um, but now they're awesome. Like my dad goes to conventions. Like my, I've tattooed my dad. My mom doesn't have tattoos, but she gets it. She like tells people to still go to the shop that like I apprenticed at in Arizona. Like mm -hmm. it's awesome. But yeah, like. Especially now because tattoos are so acceptable that it's like a cool thing that they can bust out on their unsuspecting friends. My favorite is when my dad shames people with bad tattoos. <laughs> oh my it's incredible because he straight up shames people. Like he lived in like a small town in Pennsylvania for a while and people have small town tats and like homemade tats. And they would show him because like they worked for him or something. And he'd be like, man, that is a piece of garbage. And they'd be like, what? And he'd be like, you should just drive two hours to New York and get tattooed by my son. And they're like, <laughs> what? And I'm like, dad, you can't tell that to yeah. people. And he's like, nah, screw them. He's like, they're idiots. Who cares? They got some garbage tattoo. Who cares? They should know better. You're like, no, no, I, I don't want them to come to the shop. Like, that's yeah, what the problem is. Exactly. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, no, that's the problem, dad. Is they're going to come to me and be like, I've got 60 bucks. And I'll be like, cool. The shop minimum is 100. They'll be like, I got 60 bucks. And I'm like, all right, you, great. you don't even got enough money to get out of the city now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, you can't even cross the Lincoln Tunnel. What are you doing? I've heard people say in the past that they think that growing up in the hardcore scene prepares people 
to have like a great work ethic. Oh, that's a lie. Do <laughs> you think, think there's any truth to that? Nah. Are people in bands, and, and obviously it's not across the board, but oh, for someone who's young and playing in a band, that might be the first business that they're running. And some people who do it right can really, I feel like, make a lot from that. I think it's like, I think like you said, like I think that there are people within the hardcore scene that like, just like anything else, just like any other group, whatever you want to call it, there are people who are standouts. So it's like they run a record label or they have a band or whatever. And those are the people who I think are kind of setting themselves up for like something better in the future, if anything. But a lot of times, I don't know, I think most people, they kind of just get lost in mediocrity, I guess, is a good way to put it. Like, well, I think, you know what I think the hardcore scene is in some of the bands, they get that same thing that tattooers get where there's always somebody stroke of that ego and sound, oh man, you guys are great, you're great, you're great, you're great. And then all of a sudden you're like, dude, that band sucks. Well, it's crazy too because I feel like with the hardcore scene, I feel like people within it are kind of up on shit a lot faster than most other people. Like most hardcore kids I know knew about Instagram, Twitter, MySpace, Facebook, all that shit long before it was popular anywhere else. And then the regular world gets a hold of it and kind of like normalizes it. But I, I was on Instagram. I remember I was on Instagram. It was like uh, was Thanksgiving time. I had joined it right before I had gone down to North Carolina to my parents' house, and I was with my daughters. And I woke up Thanksgiving morning, and uh, you know, you, and that's back when you know you could wake up and you'd have you know 14 new followers. But it was only I mean, it was only Apple users that could use uh, yeah, Instagram yeah, yeah. at the time. And my daughter. My eight-year-old daughter had joined Instagram at the time, and that's when Instagram there was it was it was like straight pirates. It was yeah, you know, it was full nudity. There was just it didn't matter what the hell you wanted to put on there. It was all all out there, and I remember going downstairs and was like, "Hey, delete that. You can't, <laughs> you can't be on that app. Like that's not you know it's not appropriate for you." Yeah, and she's like, "Why not? It's pictures. It's so cool." Yeah, but yeah, no, the the I do I do get some of that with the hardcore like with the hardcore kids with being like very they very hip to what's what's out there. I think that yeah, I I just think that they kind of like cuz they I mean, you have to find hardcore music most of the time. You have to find punk rock music. You can't just it, it's not something that you hear on the radio every day. So it's like you already are used to finding the shit that you like and cool stuff out there. So I feel like that kind of attitude is good in a sense of like driving you to do something but i don't know if it's necessarily like a good work ethic like yeah most, I, don't, I don't yeah i don't get the good work ethic. yeah <laughs> most most of the dudes i used to roll with back in the day like eh, i wouldn't call work ethic something that they had not even like the chantable mantras of hardcore music of Chant perseverance I, you know what most most of the most of the great things I learned from hardcore kids or other hardcore guys was, you know, how great they could shoplift and, you know, <laughs> how, how great they could steal records from a record store without being seen when there was a camera pointed on it. You know, there, you know, there was a lot of, uh, we were really good at getting over on like grocery stores. Yeah. Yeah. You know, maybe, you know, maybe it was just Stealing where I was, you know, and stuff like that too. I, you know, and I was down in South Florida. So, which was also to most places was most bands didn't go at, anymore. Like after the late, mid eighties, because it was, it was, a dark place because the people, you know, bands would get beat up and bands would get robbed and, you know, just stuff like that. And, you know, then you look back and you're like, oh man, hey guys, we're mad that there's no bands coming, but, you know, you remember so and so, so and so beat the crap out of that guy. And, you know, remember so and so and so and so stole their guitars. Like, you know, you just, it was a tough, tough thing. So I don't, I, I, I don't necessarily, any of the guys I was around were not had a great work ethic. More. Well, forget I said anything. About that. <laughs> <laughs> Cri criminal, criminal element. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a work ethic, though. I get, I get, and some, yeah, some, 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 some next to the wood. It is, yes. <laughs> okay. So now we're joined by another person here. We've got Robert Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about? What we're talking about? <laughs> Everything. I, I had a, a theory of uh, hardcore kids having a, a <laughs> built-in work ethic. Oh well. The, they're definitely resourceful. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, I think that's, you know, I learned how to steal from soda machines. <laughs> <laughs> the magic dollar. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I learned how not to work yeah. for a long time. But definitely, like, you're making shows happen on your own. And you're, 
you know, you're doing the things people are telling you not to do and you're figuring out how, your best way to do it. So I think, yeah, resourceful might be a better word than work yeah, ethic. The, the calling card. Yeah. That everyone has the same, <laughs> yeah. the same calling card number that, you know, made its way, you know. Or from the Maine, ringer. Maine to Miami, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the payphone ringer, you know. <laughs> well, it's like every music scene has the the one or two people who, like, sets up all the shows. Maybe they're the ones that I'm thinking of and not everybody else. Well, no, I mean, some of those guys were also the ones that, you know, they've never still had, you know, at this day and age, they haven't had, you know, still haven't had a real job. Which, I mean, isn't necessarily a bad thing if you can get, if you're getting by on, like. You got a hustle like that, man. It's, yeah, you exactly. Know. If, you're, if your hustle is booking shows and you've managed to do it for 20 years and you're happy with where you're at, I mean, fucking awesome. Like, uh, I'm not one to, to shut you down at all, but, like, yeah, I don't, I, I think resourcefulness is a better way to put it, like. You're, you're going out there and you're figuring it the fuck out. Like you're not letting somebody else figure it out for you. You're just doing it. Whether it's maybe illegal or maybe not the best idea isn't really your concern. You just kind of do it. And it's born out of necessity. Yeah. You know, because you have no one else that will like rent you a place or, you know, a professional sound man wouldn't want to get involved with a, a crappy hardcore band, but that's how you learn, you know. Yeah, we used to have shows inside like storage units. Like straight up, just storage units yeah. in Arizona. Yeah, down South Florida too. That gray area, you know. You, yeah, that gray area. You know. Okay, you guys, you guys have band practice today. Okay, you guys can lock it up. Yeah, no problem. The next thing you know, that you know, as soon as the manager leaves, there's you know, carloads of kids come in, build a stage out of all the milk cartons we stole from behind the grocery store, and go for it. Yeah, we had a we had a practice space that was like five stories of just like rooms that were soundproofed and there were some that were pretty big like maybe about this big as big as this room and you'd have shows in them like you just set up the band on the floor and like you just pay people I made people would pay as they came up the stairs it was like a weird house party but like with hardcore bands and props never got called it was always really cool like that was and those were just locally ran like just by somebody who was just there that day you know yeah. like that was that was something cool growing up there for sure well, like I was trying to explain to you guys, I think it's a resourcefulness more than a work ethic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so one question I want to pose to everyone, and we'll go around the circle. We'll start with you, Matt. Um, if you weren't tattooing, what would you be doing, do you think? It's scary. Probably, yeah, I'd probably be back uh, working for a printing company. I mean, it's something I learned how to do at, at 15 years old, and uh, I kind of feel like if I had to go back to doing it, I could probably still run the same machines or, uh, you know, kind of kind of bullshit my way through it, if, if not. And uh, I don't think I'd have a problem if that's what I had to do to, to live and, you know, you know, pay for the kids or whatever. Then I, that's what I would do. But God, the hell, I hope I don't ever have to. Because <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, this is uh, something special to be a part of. And uh, every day, uh, you know, you kind of, Thank you know, thank you, bless you know, take just kind of take a step back and just be like, man, I'm lucky to be doing this and lucky to be where I'm at. Sean, I would I would be doing what I'm doing now. I'm I'm I'd be painting tattooers, painting them working. <laughs> you know, nothing would change much other than me. I wouldn't be tattooing. Yeah. I might I might teach more. Um, that would be it. Yeah, I would continue doing what I'm doing. Well, you're just showing off because you've got all these things to fall back on. <laughs> I've had, <laughs> I've had so many talents. jobs before I started tattooing, so I, yeah. you know, I feel like I could do anything. I could, you know, I've worked construction, I worked in a factory, I've worked in food service. Like, I, I just do something, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't not want a tattoo. I, I love it. I, you know, I love everything about it. Um, hopefully, I can do it as long as I want to. Yeah, I think I would also be making art. I don't know if I'd be able to make a living from making art, you know, so I wouldn't want to say that, you know, I'd be remove myself from any kind of artistic expression, but at the same time, you know, I'd probably be doing some sort of manual labor like I did before I tattooed. You know, I was roofing and siding before tattooing. I did a legal business too, you know, so that would, you know, that was very lucrative and easy and also like financed me to be able to play music and stuff like that. So who knows, maybe a farmer. <laughs> It could be anything. What would you farm? Marijuana. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I already know how to. So, you know. Yeah. Um, no, anything. Like, I, you know, I think that's that would probably be a very, like, uh, I think of that as a honest way to make a living of any kind, like farming, you know, I think that would be 
a good way to make a living? Um, I actually always have the same answer to this question because it's been asked to me before. Um, I would work on a boat somewhere. I don't know why. I don't know why that's my answer, but I've always had the idea that it's like, if I'm not tattooing, I'm just going to go work on a boat somewhere. Merchant Marine. Yeah. Just yeah. go work on a shipping, like a shipping boat, work on a fishing boat, doing whatever. Bubba Gump. Don't like to eat fish. <laughs> and I've never been on a boat for a long period of time. Bo's going to buy a boat. That's, yeah. that's what he's doing. That's just... <laughs> when you guys know I'm flossing, I got a boat. Bo, so, yeah. Bo Brady shipping company. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think it's the idea of just still not really having a real job, like still being able to look like an asshole and probably still be an asshole. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, people that work on boats are usually assholes. Yeah, you, they're usually the worst. <laughs> oh, I've, I've seen those shows. I've seen those shows. Yeah, I've, I've seen Deadliest Catch. I'm very aware. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. Try, I'm trying to go the Bering Strait tomorrow, man. <laughs> we tattoo a lot of guys from boats. They're actually not assholes, so I hope they're not listening to this. They're actually some of our best customers. Yeah, there you go. Maybe not guys up there, but I'm talking about the other boat yeah, guys. He's talking about the guys that like, you know, the meth and stuff out. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about transporting drugs, dog. Um, another topic that I think is interesting um, is the way that tattooing is shown in like popular culture now. It's like my favorite topic. So for some of you guys who've been doing it twice or longer than me, was it really weird when you started seeing tattooing on television and there's like a handful of shows on any given like TV season about a lot, just like a lot of tattoo stuff all the time? Yeah, even before the, you know, the game show, tattoo shows, um, just even seeing it on television, like seeing tattooed people on television was weird. Like once the NBA, when I saw it in the NBA, and that's when I really think it broke to I the main. I remember mainstream. seeing it on like linebackers in the NFL being like, yo, those dudes got tattoos. Cause like they were the only one, like only athletes that you saw. Really. And it happened very fast. Yeah. Like, they, st they still didn't have, you know, their, their forearm for tattoos. Yeah. For the like NFL you, guys, they didn't have. You'd see like, was, you'd yeah. see like something peak out of their, like out yeah. of their shirts. It was the, it was the NBA guys yeah. all of a sudden where it was like, oh shit, this guy, he's got a sleeve. Yeah. Oh man, he's got his neck tattooed. You know, Alan Iverson. Was, and that was before like, you know, a lot of tattooers, you know. Yeah. There's quite a bit of tattooers that didn't have hand tattoos or. There's quite a few that don't, still don't, or have neck tattoos, or you know. But I think that was like Freak. an honest betrayal, <laughs> or not betrayal, portrayal of tattooing. Like these are just guys that had tattoos. It wasn't like a pop culture thing. They weren't trying to sell tattoos. Yeah. That's when I started seeing that. That's when I was really, this is weird. Mm -hmm. You know, when it became like a commodities kind of thing, where like, uh, you know, like uh, there's some producer kind of selling you the idea of what tattooing should be, you know, and even though there are always great tattooers on those shows, it's still kind of through the filter of what they think that tattooing should be. And that's what, what I always had a problem with. Yeah. yeah with the, uh, you know, you it's one of those deals. Like I've always told anyone that's worked at the shops is, you know, you get people that come in and, you know, I'll go back to even a Yelp, getting a Yelp review, because you didn't ask what the tattoo meant for somebody or why they were getting it, because they watched these shows that saw that, you know, you were supposed to now not only be a tattooer, you were supposed to be a therapist in a way. And, you know, people don't understand, like, maybe that morning your girlfriend, le of, you know, 10 years, you woke up and she was gone, she left and took the dog, or, you know, maybe you're, you know, you're, a relative passed away, or, you know, maybe, you're, you know, your kids are sick, or, you know, maybe you're just having a shitty day and, you know, but you didn't ask what this, you know, upside down airplane meant or, you know, what the, you're dot, still at you work know, what the dot, the yeah. yeah. And, you know, and what the dot meant on the top of their arm and, you know, God forbid you didn't ask that simple question and, you know, you, now you're a terrible person because that's what they saw on TV and that's what was supposed to happen. And that's how they were supposed to be treated. And, you know, why does my tattoo that's, you know, as big as a hand. Why did it take so long when I saw it on the TV show and it was done in two minutes? <laughs> you know, they, you know, and you know, or the, well, why does this tattoo cost this much? There's no way it costs that much on TV, you know, or the, I can't believe that, you know, you're charging that much. And you're like, that's the one thing I wish they would have ever put on there was, Hey man, tell people how much these tattoos actually cost. Yeah. 
Totally. I don't know if that would have been good for the IRS, though. Yeah. No, I know, but yeah, no, no. We we know that, but it, you yeah. know, give give somebody an idea, Context. you know, like yeah. you know, hey, Ami, tell them how much that you know half sleeve of the koi you just did, you know, what that cost somebody or what you were asking for it at least. I I was definitely weirded out initially by it because especially growing up in kind of a smaller town, like tattooing wasn't like a safe thing initially, you know, like it it wasn't something that everyone had and it wasn't something that there weren't a lot of heavily tattooed people. And the ones who were, were typically not the best dudes. Like they were usually somebody who was, I, I mean, it kind of went both ways. They were either like an artist or they were somebody who was not a great guy. So it was weird to see it on TV. And all of a sudden it was something that was in everyone's face because I remember being like, man, like, I'm heavily tattooed for like where I am right now. And then seeing people who were more heavily tattooed than me being kind of like looked at as celebrities. I was like, that's weird. Like, why aren't they being judged? Like that was always my kind of like weird vibe with it. But now it just feels so normalized that it's like, Oh yeah, of course there's 13 shows of it on. Like, why wouldn't there be like, of course there's. Yeah. I think the inevitability also, it, it wasn't like shocking, but it was, you're a little taken back at first. Yeah, it was just kind of like, like... Of course, they do it to everything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they've done it to punk rock. They've done, they do it to yeah. well, well, tattoos sex. They, they do it to science. They do it to everything. They yeah. Any way they can mo well, it, commodify. I remember something. talking to like a bunch of chefs, and they were like, man, like since the Food Network started existing, like our job has become like this everyone, fantasy everyone's world. Everyone's a foodie now. Yeah, it's this fantasy world yeah. where it's like, oh, we all work in three Michelin star restaurants. And it's like, no, nah, most of the time working in a restaurant fucking sucks. Like we do it cause we like it, but like, it's not easy. It's not fun. We're not always creating it's this like incredible glamorous. thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, I used to hate working. That's like one of the worst jobs I ever did was working in restaurants. Yeah. But they, I remember hearing that and just being like, oh man, like that's how I feel about these shows right now. But then at the same time, then I kind of turned off like my brain and was like, well, this isn't for us. Like these aren't aimed for tattooers. They're aimed for the general public. And it's like, of course it has to be watered down so people can understand it. Of course it has to be kind of like made easily digest digestible because some random person who's never met a heavily tattooed person isn't going to understand how important this is to an entire community. And whether that one thing is like a piece of Ed Hardy flash or a fucking machine from this time period or whatever, those are all really important to us and really important as a community. But like to this person, they don't fucking care. They just want to see something cool. They just want to, and they all want to understand why that's not cool. Well, that was, you know? Ed Hardy wasn't even a tattooer to most people. They didn't even know, you know, Ed Hardy was just clothes. That was my favorite thing in the entire world. You know, I remember when, you know, when I had gotten tattooed from Ed and uh, telling the story to somebody and I was at the shop and it was, I think it was like Chad and I, we were talking about the tattoo and, you know, ta Chad's talking about his tattoo from Ed and I'm talking about the one I had just gotten. And we had a, I remember having a customer and be like, you got tattooed from the guy that does t-shirts? Like, what? Like, and we're like, no, man, that guy, you know, and they're like, He's the tattoo yeah, guy. they're like, what, what? You know, and then you can start pointing out the stuff in the shop and they're like, you know, they're just looking at you like you're insane. And you're like, yeah, the t-shirt guy tattooed me. You know, he does cool tattoos, you know. Maybe I'll get it rhinestoned out next time. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's just weird stuff like that because, you know, the, the shows weren't aimed for the guys at the tattoo shop. Yeah. You know, they weren't they weren't on. So when we came in on, a you know, whatever Tuesday or something after it showed on a Monday and we didn't sit around like a round table and be like, hey, man, did you see the show last night? I always and watch start them. I fucking love them. I think they're so good. There's some I like to watch. I got yeah. some guilty pleasures I watch. I don't watch any of them. <laughs> really? Fuck no. I, <laughs> not at all. I loved Ink no. Master when it first came out. I thought it was so fucking funny. And I also liked it when, like, people I knew were on it. I was like, fuck yeah, get that $100,000. Like... Fuck get yeah. that thirty thousand. Yeah, get that. Yeah, get that. you gotta pay that tax. You gotta pay tax on that get shit that right away. Forty thousand oh. taxes. Like, that's amazing. If I if I went on Ink Master and I won, I would start a GoFundMe to raise the money. Actually, to, <laughs> to get the hundred thousand, get the full hundred. Yeah, there you get go. me back up to a hundred, y'all. I'm, I'm in a time of need right now. But I always thought it was. Super, I always think they're super funny. Like you watch it and just be like, yeah, this is fucking hilarious because like. I know it's not really like that. I know not every day at the tattoo shop somebody's got some like life altering fucking beef with the person sitting next to you. You guys don't fight at work every day? Eh, we do. So <laughs> all, it, <laughs> captured is I mean, just that's, that's, yeah. that's, there's, 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 there's a couple of, there's one on now that's just basically 
insanity. And yeah, it's I believe it. There's so much obnoxiousness. Yeah. It's really hard to there's, stomach it. Yeah. There's some, yeah, I can't. I can't do it. I haven't watched any of the newer ones, like it, it, mostly because I just don't have the energy to find them. And I've got like I've got my other shows. I've got my other programs. I like the one that's the customer strike back. <laughs> What's <laughs> that? Yeah, what is this? It's stuff? Ink Master's Redemption. Like, oh, if, 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 I've if, seen that one. If you oh, messed yeah. up their tattoo, the customers can come back and like <laughs> get your well, And out. I remember yeah. I saw that. I did see one of those, and they came out like screaming at somebody's face, and I was like. Dude, yeah, yeah. Yeah. like came out like you ruined my tattoo and I can't believe. And what are you gonna? In? And I mean, they're like girls and, so, and I'm just like, wow. Yeah, how is like, that acceptable? Yeah, like why? Well, you're putting this on and it's like, how is a tattoo where you've now you've agreed to do this yeah. to be treated like yeah. this? Like it's a, you know because somebody's gonna see that. They might come to the shop and do the same thing and act like that. Yeah, And you can't tell them at the shop you got it for free on television. (laughs) Right. (laughs) I don't know if you guys have ever seen the ones where it's like the tattoo, like the videos of the person, like the worst customer, quote unquote, and it's like the person screaming in a chair. It's like, dude, I've worked in crazy street shops where it's like get them in, get them out, and it's like one after another, and it's people sometimes who shouldn't be getting tattooed. I have never once worked in a shop nope. where you were letting somebody act like that. No. no. It's like it's the fall of the tattoo. Yeah. No, no. You lost yeah. control. You never, yeah. like that. Doesn't happen. No. Yeah. It, the worst you get that is like somebody getting a piercing and they scream for a second. And even then it's like, shut your fucking cuss. You, know, yeah. you scream at the piercer. If the they do, you the just shop. stop. Like, we're, yeah, done, we're done. For yeah. today. You're like, yeah. what is happening right yeah. now? Yeah. Thanks. Th- here. Thanks for the setup. You paid me. I'm sorry. When you, when you want to do it, I'll keep this till you can actually sit and go on your way. I've had one customer who acted ridiculous and she was freaking out before. Like it got to the point where I would be like, mm, and she would start freaking out before I even started tattooing her. And I was laughing in her face. I'm like, you're acting ridiculous. Like, you know this, this is a yeah. joke now. Like, yeah. we're not even serious. We're not on the same page. This is hilarious to me. We're finishing your tattoo. This should have taken 20 minutes. It's taken two hours. Wow. This is amazing. But like, she wasn't screaming while I'm trying to tattoo her. She's just acting like a clown. But it's, I've, I've never understood those videos of people like letting that shit happen. I'm like, I had a girl recently and I told her, I was like, look, I tattooed her friend. And then the girl was freaking out while I was tattooing the friend. And I said, if you don't think you can do it, she's like, I can do it. And the first line I did, she's like, did one of these, you know, kind of checking me with, with the shoulder. And I was like, you can't do this. And she's like, well, it hurts. And I was like, I understand that it hurts. I said, but it's going to hurt. I said, if you just sit there, it hurts. What am I supposed to do? And I was like, here, just hold on. And I was like, you want to get the tattoo finished quick? And she's like, you know, just start running, you know, running the lines and, you know, finish tattoo and, you know, it's like a cross. So she's like, you know, she gets up and I give her the thing and she's like, she's like, why were you so mean to me? I can't believe you were so mean to me, you know, and she got a tear and I was like, oh, I said, uh, you know, and I started feeling bad. I was like, I didn't realize you were that upset. I said, I said, I was kind of joking, you know, same thing, kind of like joking because you were acting so much when I wasn't even touching you with a machine. Yeah. And she was like, I told you it hurt. And I was like, but I explained tattoos hurt. They have to, she's like, hers didn't hurt. And I was like, Everyone's they different. all hurt. They all, yeah. As soon as you break the skin, it's with a needle. It hurts. I don't care who you are. You feel something. And I, you know, and of course, Hey, I'm sorry. I don't, you know, I don't want to have the, the negative, super yell. negative. Yeah. yeah. You know, Hey, sorry. I didn't really, I didn't realize you're that upset. You didn't know? realize you, know, of you were course, a five star yeah. Yelp reviewer. Yeah. yeah. Well, she had tears in her eyes. She might hit the five stars instead of one by accident. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know, but you know, again, and then you, know, you start to go, you know, start to feel bad. But then you're like, well, you know what? I'm just trying to do my job, and I'm trying to do, you know, we all price a tattoo, or we're doing a tattoo based on how long we know it's going to take. So if you price something, you know, you price for a hundred bucks or something, you know that it's not going to take you two hours. And you know, next thing you know, you're in a two-hour tattoo, yeah. and you're just like, oh my. Same thing that we we said earlier, where you're the last customer of the day, where you're like, sure, you know what? I'm going to do it for you because you've got here and. Next thing you know, it's the worst experience of, you know, now your day is just terrible. What's that imagine. show called? Our <laughs> life. <laughs> I would call it, um, what do they call it when people shoot the, at the buzzer? When people shoot the, the shot clock? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they put up a shot clock in the shop and it's like, you have 20 seconds to figure out what you're going to do. What will it be? Yeah, exactly. Hail Marys. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's there, and there's a new show that I ha- I haven't got to see yet, but it's MTV does it. I was it. just gonna bring this. And up. it's is the, it the Snooki one. Yeah. It's, what is yeah, it? It's Snooki from you seen from, it. Yeah. Let, bring, let's yeah. Talk. Tell us what Ooh. it is because I, I haven't got to watch Ooh. it. And I was like, okay. Oof. it started in England too. Yeah, yeah. You've seen it? 
Oh, I saw the England version. Yeah, so it's the same thing. It's like the worst tattoo show, and I feel like this might be the last one. Like this is as low as it can get, and then they're just going to be like, all right, we're going to make more shows about bakeries again. And they go have, you seen Black, <laughs> have you seen Black Ink Crew? Yeah. Okay. This but, is, it's worse than that, I the think. The thing about Black Ink Crew is that it wasn't about tattoos at all. It was Not just, at all. It, I, it was just a reality show. Yeah, yeah, I liked it. I love it. It's the New York. You get, it's only the New York version, which now they have shops Chicago, everywhere. They have a Chicago version, but that's not affiliated with that one. Oh, really? Have, the, the New York guys has two New York shops, has a New Orleans shop, and an Atlanta <laughs> shop. That's, that shows my jam. Big like, fan. Big fan. <laughs> I, am a, I am a big fan of C's and the rest of the crew. That's I'm amazing. Like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen his work, but I like how he deals with his employees. <laughs> <laughs> what, Hennessy and hookers? Or strippers? Sorry, wow. I'm sorry, not, not hookers, strippers. Ladies of the night. <laughs> so, what is the one, the snooky one called? Uh, Just Tattoo of Us is the other one? Just Tattoo of Us is the one from England. Yep. And I think the snooky one is something how like... Far how far is Tattoo Far? Yep, yeah, how far is Tattoo yeah. It's uh, all like bad puns that are so bad you'd never think they're uh, allowed so to be the title bad. of the show. Oh, it's so, so fucking bad. I've, I've only seen like the reveal portions, but they'll have someone in front of a mirror and it, it's like two, two friends or two foes and they'll pick the tattoo for each other. I think no, they have no control over. No they control like. and they're blindfolded the entire time. Yeah. Wow. And they've Dude. got, yeah. what the Dude. Hell? and the set looks like the Ink Master set where they've got like brightly colored cubicles, all of different colors. So, you know, you're in like a different place each shot and, and then they finish it. Or, or they walk around like the judges on Ink Master will walk around and be like, "Hey, how's it going?" But but it's Snooky from Jersey Shore and some guy that nobody's ever heard of. Snooky's a big selling point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, she's got like three tattoos, so she's definitely like expert. She's she knows. A, she's a connoisseur. Yeah, I would say. Yeah, so. She got Wow. She's got a sleeve now. Yeah, she does. Yeah, she got Disney sleeve. <laughs> Sick. I checked it out. I made sure it was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I was shocked. And so. Then they bring them up to the mirror, and it's always a tattoo like on their ass, or the guys will get like lower back tattoos. It's like the cheesiest, like easiest Diss. joke uh, always. Yeah, and it's always a tattoo of a dick or a vagina. Dude. Okay. Oh my god. Or it's like a tattoo. It's like I'm gay, but it's like <laughs> a real tattoo, <laughs> and they're putting it on TV. It's great, but but they do it. <laughs> the one that I saw that was a clip was Snooki's looking at this tattoo, and her face is like. I can't believe this shit is real, but it's clearly put on because yeah. it's like that's what they're paid she's to do. She's an actress. Yeah, she's an actress. <laughs> but now they're like, "Do you want this, your five grand or not?" <laughs> this girl, this girl chose for like her girlfriend a like portrait of herself, cart like or whatever character of herself in a garbage can next to this girl's vagina because her pussy stunk. Wow. And I was like watching this on my phone, just going, yeah, this is where tattooing's at right now. Rome is sick. burning. Yeah. It's this sad. is sick. No, no Rome it's burning. Sad. Yeah, yeah, this is sick. Yeah. And from what I can tell, they are legitimately real tattoos. Because my yeah. first, they're so ridiculous, I think, okay, these are, when you, they show it, it's got to be fake. It has to be fake. You can't do this to people. Mm -hmm. But it's, to, it's seemingly very real. They, they did one at the shop. They did one at the shop when, uh, I was in Miami, um, and I can't remember who actually did it. It was Nikki, shop. wasn't it? No, no, no. So no, no, this is back in 99, I think it was, um, down in South Beach. And MTV had a show. It was like, what would you do for $100 or something like that? Like spring break. It was one of the spring break shows. And uh, they brought a guy in the shop. I'd eat my own shit. Yeah. Well, they, <laughs> but they brought a guy in the shop, and basically, what would you do for $100? Would you get a, you know, a tattoo? You know? Would you get a tattoo? Yeah, I'd get a tattoo for a hundred bucks. So the guy gets a tattoo for the, you know, they give him the hundred bucks. And it's Ricky Martin's signature. And the fucking guy loses his shit. But it's, and that's now went from there to this, you know, Ironically, picture of an actual TV show. I got paid $200 to do Ricky Martin's signature on someone at New York Adorned. It was my first walk in there. That's amazing. <laughs> nice. And that guy was excited, <laughs> right? Yeah, it was a girl. That's yeah, this guy, and they were, you know, and this person was, you know, this guy was fucking lost it, just livid that, you know, how, oh, I can't believe you would do that to me. And it's like, but you got your hundred bucks, dude. That's what you wanted. It was, you know, sick, sick hundo too. Well, people Ouch. are selling their their skin for advertising, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Oh, that I remember those, those were, you know, yeah. eBay. You know, put put this ad on my. What was the boxing company that was paying everybody to do it? I'd love to check in with those people now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Where, where, they still, where, they're still living with those tattoos? Yeah. Where are they they're now? 
Right. I think I'm being pranked right now. Yeah. You, you, <laughs> well, this is the show. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting tattooed now. Yeah, hold, uh, all right, guys, come on in. <laughs> hold up, hold him down. Yeah. Well, that was a fun time. It was very cool to have a larger group to talk to instead of just a one-on-one interview like I've done for most of the other episodes, so I hope you enjoyed that. Check out Sean Barber at Memoir Tattoo in Los Angeles, California, and you can follow his work at Sean D. Barber. And Matt Knopp is at Tattoo Paradise in Washington, D.C., and you can see his work at Matt 2 Paradise, D.C., you can find Bo Brady at Captured Tattoo in Tustin, California, and follow his work at Bo X Brady. And of course, you can find friend of the show, Robert Ryan, at Electric Tattoo in Asbury Park, New Jersey, and follow his work at Robert Ryan 323. If you haven't heard my episode I did with Robert a few weeks ago, go back and check that one out. As always, I'm Andrew Stortz, and you can follow me on Instagram at Andrew Stortz, S-T-O-R-T-Z. If you like this show, I beg of you, please give a five-star rating and a review on iTunes or wherever else you're listening to the show. It helps new people find it who may not otherwise, and then they, too, can like the show as much as you do. If you want to learn more about Books Closed, go to our website at booksclosedpodcast.com, which I can barely say every week where you can find show notes, videos, links, information about all of our guests and sponsors, and more. And one more big thank you to our sponsors this week, The Original Tattoo Pillow and Tattoo Smart. And as for me, it's time for me to go bye-bye. I'll see you next week. We'll be back. We'll do it again. We've got a great interview lined up for you that you are all love and enjoy. So thank you for listening. Appreciate you. Have a good week. I will see you next Monday.